Everyone's talking about the Jones boy. All of you coming out today to enable me to own up to the worst kept secret. I have been on a media blackout. We are not going to let vested interests marginalise and cinderellaise the very heart of our country. If you look at New Zealand today and the politics that governs it, New Zealand is a, in a very parlous state. Where we learnt overnight that money can buy citizenship whether one intends to live in New Zealand or not. Where you can claim to be an investor, put in seven million dollars into a joint government fund and when you pull your money you make 23 million, the government makes nothing and you don't pay any tax but you're meant to be a great investor for our country. How does this work? And they've done it over and over and over again. We've been a very parlous state where offshore money can buy critical land and resources whether disadvantaged New Zealand or not. This man, Teal, got a 30 million high country farm up against all the rest of the world because he didn't have to face the rest of the world. He got it because, and without the Overseas Investment Office scrutiny, because he was able to claim, I am a New Zealander. And he lived here for 12 days. 12 days. Everybody else had to live here for 1,350 days, even to make the application. So why would he be different? Now they say it's because he's a mate of Donald Trump's. <laughs> Problem is, back in 2011, no one had heard of Donald Trump standing for America. So that can't be true, can it? And if he's a mate of Donald Trump at the last election in America, well, the National Party in 2016 was backing Hillary Clinton. So that can't be true either, can it? Just one lie after the other. We're in a part of the state where political parties back six days ago. Their backing is encapsulated in a message sent to me this morning of support and best wishes from all of caucus by our deputy leader of New Zealand First, Ron Mark. Ladies and gentlemen, we are united in this nomination and the representation of the electorate like Congaray we know won't be easy and we'll need all of the intelligence and experience and commitment of our candidate and all the backing from us as well. This is no time to be looking around at novices or an MP with training wheels on. <laughs> this is no time to be putting up an MP that takes three years to find out where the parliamentary toilets are. <laughs> this is no time to put up someone who is not, who's not prepared to say, my city is going to get some representation and so will its hinterland. We want someone who will hit the ground running, knows the system inside out, knows that we have to concertina in a short time, the delay and neglect of a long time, and get some real milestones of achievement. We want just three years to prove we can do what they could never do. You give us us three years and we'll never let you down. Easy. Ladies and gentlemen, our candidate, like so many of us here, and proud of it, is a country boy. Off a farm. Not too arrogant to admit it. Doesn't, he knows one end of the cow from the other. <laughs> <laughs> Who made the most of educational opportunity all the way to Harvard University to become a national, no, international statesman and leader. This candidate has a stunning record, but most recently has devoted his time, if anybody watches this is the sign, has devoted his special skills to turning the natural resources of diverse Pacific peoples, as we are, into long-term sustainable assets and has been internationally acquitted with that. Now that's what we want him to do here in Paré, to turn our efforts into real wealth and real jobs, to, to, to revive again this province where one time there was no unemployment whatsoever. And that's exactly what we're going to do here in Paré with our neglected asset base. Ladies and gentlemen, our candidate is going to be a real voice for Whangarei and indeed for the whole of the North. He'll speak to you now. Here's the Honourable Shane Jones. That's very wise advice. Mr Jones. Now, to be 
before you get up, before you get up, before you get up, some of your old guys will remember this, and, uh, and older women will remember this, right? The song goes like this. The whole town's talking about the Jones boy. <laughs> Come on, give us a piece of clip. Yeah. Uh, kia ora folks, Pākāne first, Winston and your team and the Greyhound Special. <laughs> Going up and down the country hunting down rabbits, a national pest, go high. <laughs> I want to acknowledge my family, acknowledge obviously my parents way up north, etc. And um, most importantly, all of you coming out today to enable me to own up to the worst kept secret. <laughs> and I tell you, it's a bit of a challenge telling Murray McCulley on a regular basis, I really don't know what I'm going to do when I finish being an ambassador in the Pacific. <laughs> and to our friends in the media, greetings. I've come to learn that you are both a blessing and a curse. But we'll need your services to get our message out. But if it's not uh, developed and uh, promoted in the right fashion, Winston has got more Facebook followers than anyone else, than anyone else in politics. <laughs> Folks, I was coming here this morning, and I won't talk for too long. I was coming here this morning, and a mate of mine put on a song. There's something in the air. And you would know as well as I do that whatever is in the air has been sensed by voters in America, it's been sensed by voters in Australia, voters in the EU, voters all around the world. Now, our friends from National, they deny that there's something in the air. They're too deep in corporate clover. They've ended up being the upper crust of politics whilst they expect our regions, Pangare and the broader north, to survive on a few economic crumbs. Those days are over. Yay! And of course, whatever's in the air has been sensed by the silver fox of New Zealand politics. <laughs> now, throughout, throughout, through, folks throughout the North, stand up, have a voice, back me, because every voter in the Whangarei electorate is entitled to have a view about the issues that bedevil us. Every time Winston, who's been right for many a long year, raises our concerns about protecting our legacy, our heritage, our foundation values in the face of indiscriminate immigration, he shouted down. If you have those concerns, I have those concerns. They are legitimate concerns for you and I as Kiwis to express and to back people who sure want a party, want a government that's a part of the world but puts ourselves first. So. Let there be no doubt, this cap suits me very well. <laughs> I had it specially made to ensure that it fitted around my Maori Yugoslavian slightly oversized head. <laughs> Whangarei is taken for granted. Whangarei gives its votes to a party that continues to mock the regions of New Zealand. The current government has become captured by corporate, metropolitan, in, indiscriminate in the sense that it has no desire to dedicate direct resources where you and I know they should be. The productive regions. My dad was a farmer. My grandfather was a farmer. I grew up knowing where the wealth's country comes from. The wealth's country does not come from starting dodgy language schools, ruining the reputation of New Zealand as a place of high esteem in terms of international education. That is a recent phenomenon, and if I have anything of any influence to offer after the election, we'll see an end to all that dodgy activity. We've got the most fantastic port here, just down the road, Marsden Point. Do you think you can find anyone in Wellington or in the current government who is prepared to invest either in the rail, coastal shipping or revitalising areas like that? No. You will get no change until you vote 
for both Winston, I and our colleagues because there's no point being back in politics, folks, unless you're going to make a meaningful, widespread difference. Sure, if you're interested in business, stay in, inter stay in private enterprise and pursue net profit after tax. If you're exclusively interested in social justice, be strong, be in that sector. But if you want to effect systemic change in New Zealand, the only waka, the only medium is politics. And politics needs fearless leaders, navigators, paddlers, and supporters like yourself. Yeah. So please back me. Oh my fucking God. Folks, just as I wind up, that bus, the Greyhound Special, is going from the head of the fish right throughout New Zealand, taking the message, giving people the reassurance, the confidence that they can stand up and own their own opinions again without being shouted down by a politically correct elite, without being closed down by a small, narrow range of interests who want things to stay as they are. There is a mood for change, there's an air for change. Back a change merchant and we'll turn the fortunes of Pāngare around ASAP. Kia ora tāte. And you may now join me singing the All Black song. All you Wellingtonians, sing that bloody song loud and clear at the Cape Town this weekend. Thank you very much, family.